In this tutorial I'll show you the quizzes function of Moodle and how you can create self-marking student quizzes. In it I'll show you how to create a quiz, how to add questions, the various question types that Moodle provides to you, and then at the end I'll show you the student experience for the finished quiz. So let's get started. Here I am in Moodle, I'm logged in as the teacher and I'm going to turn editing on I'll navigate to where within Moodle I'd like to place my quiz, perhaps it's in this section here, and then I'm going to choose Add an Activity or Resource. From the various choices available here, scroll down until you see the quiz option, which has the little tick as its icon, and then click Add. Now the first screen that you're presented with is the description of the quiz itself, so maybe it's, I know, Microsoft Office quiz. You can add a description if you like, and then it's a matter of working through the various settings. I find it easier to click this expand all option first so that I can see the settings at one view. I'm going to scroll down. The first is about the timing and availability of the quiz. You can set dates where the quiz is available to students if that's appropriate. You can also set time limits, so I'm going to do that, I'm going to enable time limits and I'm going to say, for instance, it's available for 30 minutes from the start of the quiz. When you do that, you then need to make decisions about what happens if that 30 minute time window elapses. And there are a number of options here. I'm going to use this option here, which is basically they can submit what they've done, but no more questions. I think that's probably the fairest of the options. I'll scroll down to look at the grade options. There's a number of choices here, but this is an important set setting. How many attempts are you going to allow your student to take? For me, I might choose three. And then if you allow for multiple attempts, which grade do you uh, record in the Grade Centre? And of course, usually you would expect that to be the highest grade. You can then choose the layout options for your quiz. Now, my own personal preference is to see all the questions on one screen. So I'm going to choose the new page option, never all questions on one page, but you choose what you feel is appropriate to your quiz. I'm going to scroll down. I like these options. Shuffle within questions basically uh, randomizes your quiz so that different students, when they attempt the quiz, will get the questions in different orders. I'm going to leave the review options as they're set there. I don't need to change anything. I'm going to scroll down. If this was a uh, summative assessment, if you wanted to control when and how your students access the quiz, you could indeed set things like a password that the students would need to enter ahead of the quiz. So you could get them in a room, say the password for today is jelly beans and off they go. I'm going to scroll down. Now under this last setting, activity completion, we can use this as a way to track our student participation. One way of doing that is to set from the drop down list, show the activity as when conditions are met and tick the box which says students receive a grade to complete this activity. What that means, and recall that this is a self-marking quiz, if a student attempts and gets a grade, we've got their participation. So it's just a nice measure to track their participation along the way. And then I'm going to choose save and display. So we've created the quiz, but we've not yet added any questions. We need to do that. So we're going to click on edit quiz. So it's now time to start adding questions to our quiz. I do that by hitting add a question and then choosing from the question types here. There's a very many of them. I'm going to stick to a couple of standards, but I invite you to explore the various options available here. For me, I'm going to start by creating a multiple choice question. I'm then invited to give it a name. Now this is really for you to keep track of your question. So I just could call this question one, for instance. And then the question itself goes into the question text box.
Once you've created the question wording, scroll the screen down. Decide on what mark you want that question to be worth. I'm happy with one mark. You can give some general feedback for the overall question if you like. And I'm going to scroll down to where I get to enter the various choices. So, for instance, I need to indicate, of course, what the correct answer is. I'll do that first. So I'm going to say that this is... I need to indicate that that's the correct answer by giving it a grade. And in this case, it's worth 100% of the available marks. I can give some specific feedback if I choose to. And then I'm going to scroll down and give some alternative answers which are incorrect. OK, scroll down, right to the bottom of the page and hit Save Changes. So we've created our first question and we get to preview that if we wish by clicking the little icon here. You can see that that has the standard multiple choice options where students can choose one of the available choices there. I'm going to close that preview down and show you a variant of the multiple choice question which I really like. It's which one or more of the following answers are true. So I'm going to create another question by hitting add a question. I'm going to choose multiple choice again but I'll choose some different settings now. Much as before I give it a name and a t uh, the actual question text itself. So in this example, there's actually a number of possible answers. I'm going to give it more marks. And I'm also going to choose from the option here, multiple answers allowed. So this is which one or more of the following are true. I'm going to scroll down. The first correct answer might be Now because that answer is correct, I need to specify that it gets some marks. I happen to know that there are two correct answers for this. So I'm going to give each of the correct answers 50%. So I'm going to give the first correct answer 50%. And the second correct answer also receives 50%. I now need to give some alternative incorrect answers and scroll to the very bottom and hit save changes. So allow me to preview this question now. Now the difference here is because we allowed for multiple answers this now has these checkboxes where you can notice that students can choose more than one correct answer. So I actually favour these question types. They're much deeper and indeed what you're asking is a series of questions. They've got to answer each one of the alternatives. So it's a slightly higher order question type. I'll add one more question for good measure. This one I'm going to use is the matching question type. This is a really useful uh, tool, particularly to match terms with their definitions. You can also use it as an ordering and sequencing tool. So let me show you that. Under default mark, in this case I'm going to mark this out of 4. It will become evident why as I scroll down. And then what I need to do is specify the question and the answer that correspond and match. So for instance, if I'm talking about Microsoft Word, I specify the question and then the matching answer in the corresponding box. And I'm going to do that all the way down the page. So I've added all my questions and I hit save changes and my third question has been added. So it's about now that I think I'll swap over to the student view to show you how this looks for our students. 
here I am, I'm logged as, as a student. I'm going to click into the relevant section and I can click on the newly created quiz. It gives a summary of the quiz, the number of attempts allowed, the time limit, etc. And I can begin the quiz. The first of these was a multiple choice question. You might notice that these choices have been randomised, they're not in the order that they were created. The second was our multiple choice that allowed for multiple responses. Notice I can tick as many answers are correct. And the last of these was our matching exercise where the question is displayed and then the various options are available to match these questions up. Once a student has entered their answers in, they can hit the next button. They can see that they've saved their questions. They can hit submit all and finish. And so after submitting the quiz, it's automatically marked and the student is immediately provided with feedback. You can see that the student is informed about whether they got the question correct or incorrect. And as they scroll down, they can see in this example that some of their answers were correct, some were incorrect, and that informed the final mark. You'll notice at the top of the screen that this student got 71% of the available mark 